Turn my music off. That's what's up. What's up, everybody? Ah, get this fire going. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What's happening, everybody? I don't know if anybody's here yet, but I'm just going to talk because you could always watch this in the playback. And I'm not going to say it twice. Just started the fire. Probably not the best idea to do when you're just starting a live stream. And, uh, yeah, one person. All right. What's up, one person? How are you? So, today I am on detailing, final details, cleaning up this piece and getting it looking good. So, not going to be a ton of movement, ton of, like, loud and wild stuff, but... I'll be talking about details. So I'm going to work on the bear. I'll bring the camera close. We'll do like an in-depth kind of thing. I think the camera will be close enough that I'll be able to uh, see the comments maybe. I don't know. It's going to be pretty close. So, um, yeah, so obviously I started working on it yesterday. I didn't want to stream. I needed a day off and uh, did a video. If you guys get a chance, go check out the... Uh, carving, I can't remember what I called it, hidden wood secret carving, I don't know, I thought it was a cool idea though to just like go and carve something, leave it on the beach, I'm going to do that all over the place and uh, yeah, I've got a big one planned for the, for the winter. Um, okay, so pitter patter, let's get at her and uh, oh, what's up everybody, so I think right now I am going to continue working on the bear. So, we'll bring you closer and hopefully I don't lose service. Ah! And, uh, we'll do it as best we can. There we go. So, detail, detail, detail. Okay, I just watched it. Can't wait for the Christmas one. Oh, yeah, me too. It's going to be crazy. Okay, I got to get the GoPro turned on here because I have been neglecting filming while doing this. And uh, here we go. So I'm going to be using the 4300. Mostly finger sander. And uh, right now I'm into the carbide bit, so... I just have to find the right bit. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Yeah, I won't be able to see the comments, but I'll do my best to check in. So, um, let's do it. So, yeah, I'm just doing final detail. And uh, when you're doing super small, intricate pieces like this, it's a lot of sanding. Sanding and grinding. I think that should be good so you guys can see kind of over my shoulder. Let's see if I can get this closer. Oh, gotta go back. There. Gotta go back, right? Yes. So that's as close as I can get without losing service. So I'll have to check back in and see if uh see what's happening, but yeah, Makita finger sander, work tail work, and uh, as you can tell, like this is kind of coming together. And when I'm carving these live bear, like real bears, and he's kind of realistic, I'm still always thinking about proportion and um, anatomically correct and where the fur pattern is. So, also give and take that there is stuff that's not. I mean, you know. There's certain things that aren't going to be perfect, but if, if it uh, catches your eye and for the overall benefit of the piece and it's not being judged in the competition, you make it work. And I'll try to fix it, whatever it is that's bothering me, but I'm not going to say it on here just in case my clients are watching. So, now in doing so, take the finger sander and then I'm going to be using this. Uh, I love this Dremel uh, cord. We're still good? Yeah, we're good. There we go. So I don't use these bits very often, but I got all kinds of bits. All kinds of bits going on today. You know, all my saber tooth, 
all my Dremel carbides, like I've been using this one, I never use this bit, but I, you know, normally it's just cones and stuff. I got everything kind of just kicking around. Ah, so this one is what I've been using a lot, the dovetail, um, saber tooth green. And, uh, yeah, so pitter patter, let's get at it. You know, I've been layering in the layers, right? So you do the ears, you got the head tapering down, you got the mouth, you want your cheekbones set in. The eyes are roughed in, and then, like, he's, he's twisted, so I'm pushing in the body. And I have started to make serious commitment cuts. Now, when you're doing relief carving, you don't want to make these kind of cuts until you're 100% committed. Anything from behind or back here, when you're doing a relief, you want to just straight back cut until... You're 1,000% that's where it is. Because it can come back to bite you in the ass, like, so, so hard. So, yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's lay in this fur pattern here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how this is going to work. I don't normally do this small scale of detail. And uh, so, I, A, it's going to be kind of a trial and error as we go. I'm at the point now where it's detail time. And, uh, you know, I was talking to Jordy Fusion, who's here and probably moderating the uh, conversation with everybody. And I'm sure Shane and uh, Spike and everybody's here, too. So what's up, everybody? Um, I'll, I'll get to know everybody as time goes on as best I can. But, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is start to kind of think of where the fur is going to be. And it's not about capturing each no, the hair, sorry, the hair. It's about creating the essence. And then if it doesn't work, I'll come back and do this. Ideally, I don't want to do this the whole time because it will take forever. But if I can capture something with this, that's what I'll do because I know it'll be a much faster way to get this done. So let's go. And it's working pretty good. So I'll stick with this. And then at the end, I will go over it with the Dremel. Just to create power lines. And I'll explain what power lines are to me afterwards. It's something that Fultz and I always talk about. But it's, uh, I'll explain it when I get there. GoPro. There we go. Perfect. At least we'll get some footage, right? Let's see. Is it connected? Perfect. Okay. Here we go. You gotta be careful with that. Even it's it's okay because this is underneath the uh, top of the 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 cranium, uh, top of the skull, and there is a separation between the jawbone muscle and uh, and, and the uh, yeah the top of the jawbone 
where this is disconnected. So there is a separation here. I got lucky there. But with this aggressive stuff, like if you're just getting started, it might be good to do it with a Dremel, but you can do it with this too. And just touching it ever so slightly. You're just creating the accents of it. You want to make the fun look good. There we go. Almost had six meters. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, oh, oh, I must have clipped this. All right, here we go. So when you make little mistakes, you just have to figure out how to make it better. Not panic, because it's just weird. So I'll just get this and then figure it out, get it flat, sharpen it, and here we go. Make them kind of a happy day. He's having a good day. And then... Cut in. So, 
one thing you have to remember is when you start doing this, especially in competition. So if you in, if you go in a competition, and uh, and there's a judging rule called consistency of finish. Now, what that means is. You can do any piece you want, and the judge will give you 10 points for consistency of finish, which means if you only use chainsaw, that's consistent to your finish, and you will get 10 points. If they don't give you that, the judge is a fucking... Oh, whoops. My bad. Hopefully I don't lose my monetization. Uh, then the judge is not clear on the rules. Or maybe I'm not clear on the rules, but I think that's pretty pretty clear um so that being said if you're going to do this with this much detail the rest of this has to do it now that being said there is ways you can spotlight it so now i have to do it with him and him or her or her or whatever but this this and this has to be done this now has to all be finger sanded because that's what i've committed to this angle grinded chainsaw. This grinded out with a grinder. And the bird is going to be a whole nother day. But today my goal is in the next two hours to get this elk pretty much done and this bear pretty much done. Now, I'm not going to go crazy. Is this thing going still? Perfect. Um, I'm not going to go crazy with doing eyes and punching in holes because I am going to airbrush it and I am going to paint it. And... Uh, I just want to make sure that it looks good and has the right flow and fur and, and there's that like depth of texture. So like for instance, I'll start punching in different layers for the lines of the animal. So like, uh, here. Now I'm doing what's called power lines, all right? So power lines are things that are visually going to drive uh, drive the piece. And that can be done in subtle nuances, like, uh, you know, the, the power line of separating your arms, separating your legs, the river that runs through it. They will have dividing lines that create power lines. That's what we call them, at least. That's what I call them. I don't know if that's even a term or not, but you know what? Uh, to me, it, it, it resonates with me because I know, like, there's certain things you want to pop. The eyes, the, the hands, the, the ears, the stump, where the claws are, you know? And same with the bird, the beak, the eyes, the claws, the talons, the feathers. Not all the feathers, because those get washed out, but in, in, in some cases, depending on the detail, this is quite detailed. I still have to, like, shape and thin and 
you know, these are a little thick, so I still want that to come down. But, uh, yeah, so you you got to think about your power lines. And then your accents, which are like the trees, the mountain. You know, it all kind of plays. And when you're doing a relief carving, you're able to go, you know, this is, this is one direction. So I wanted the mountain to go this way. This is another direction. This changes the direction, and this pulls the eye a different way where you have a level of lines, and these are your levels of height. And that's something I'm thinking about as I'm carving. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this is working. Oh, yeah, cool. So, yeah, I mean, I hope that makes sense to you guys. I, uh, yep, let's go. I gotta just go. Time to get this thing done. <laughs> And also, power lines can be lines of separation, definitive lines, and then you feed that out afterwards, because that's very dramatic, but you do want to separate the tree, which I think needs some of these, like, which needs some extra detail, because this is quite a big feature. You know, I thought it was kind of cool to have, like, an old, kind of rotting tree, very delicate, but... You start getting into this kind of detail, you're going to be here a long time. But it pays off, man. It'll look good. And the more you do it, the better you get. So don't beat yourself up. I get a lot of messages from people who are just starting carving. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people now are sending me their pictures, which is awesome. I'll help whenever I can. Uh, uh, but you ask like what I can say to do it better and it's you know I can give you my opinion but really it just comes down to practice and, and, and really pushing yourself and, and that's carving I mean I carve every day when saw dogs have just finished and I carve my ass off and tried to get better and it was you know, I had Chris Folk, luckily, who would help me, and all the guys from Sawdog. But that doesn't take away the fact that, sure, I had awesome people, but I also worked my ass off. Like, I worked hard. And I still work hard. You know, I, I, now I'm working hard on editing and making new YouTube things, but I, I still go back and I watch, you know different artists on YouTube, and I go back and watch old classes that I've done. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so some of you guys have been asking about classes. So if you go to SawValley.com, uh, you can sign up and subscribe. The, uh, the, the, the class sign-up is going to go next week. Uh, it's going to be six, four to, or five weeks, five to six weeks, probably 400 bucks, and we'll do Zoom classes. And each week I'll have the first couple weeks kind of, uh, I'll give you some ideas. We'll carve for the week. You'll go, you'll carve it. Then next week we come back and we'll reconvene and we'll talk about your piece and we'll talk about how to make it better. And then as we further along, everybody has their own ideas and everybody wants to do their own thing. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to talk to you guys about that. So it's going to be the core fundamentals, to uh, tools, <coughs> and what everybody's been asking about, how to template. Um, that'll be up there, too. We'll talk about that in the class. So, yeah, it, there's lots coming up, but next week we will be registering. I don't know if anybody will take the course, but you know what? have been getting asked about it, so it's, uh, it's time to do it. So, yeah, sawvalley.com, sign up for the uh, online, whatever it's called, and I'll uh, send out a blast before it does it. I've never done it. I just literally got a thing. But I already got 70 people signed up. Woo! <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Going? Ah, oh, good, 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 good. 
You know, make sure you think about the bones. Think about how the bones lay, how the bones are standing, what bones are where. You're, I'm not good at them. I, don't, I couldn't tell you what is in all the bones in the feet. But I can kind of give you an idea of, of, of how they work. And <coughs> Ah, sawdust. I'm kind of making this twist in a bit. Because I like the idea of it being twisted. You can see that streak there? That means it's getting weak. So you got to play easy. Okay. Sorry about that. What's doing it? Okay. I kept thinking that I was uh I was cutting this and I was like, I'm not having touched it, but it's actually this. We gotta be careful. <laughs> I didn't know that. <coughs> and I don't normally cart or sand this much, so the sawdust is coming up here and getting in the throat. So, yeah, so now that's kind of how I will leave this until I'm, I, I, I think I'll go up to, I don't know, what do you guys want to watch, eagle or elk? You tell me, I'll step back and we'll look at the comments. Uh, what do you guys want to watch, eagle or elk? What, 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 what? The comment's not on? Top chat, live chat, all visible chat. Uh, uh, I hope it's working. Learn more. No. Uh, oh, there we go. Up to you, love them both. All right, James. You're you're really helping me with that decision. <laughs> Just busting chops, man. Just busting chops. Okay, eagle. Out. Um, that's all right. Got to get a new thing for it. Okay, go with the eagle. What cordless chainsaw would you use for carving? Uh, I don't know. Like battery powered, you mean? Uh, if I was to do one, I would say probably the Husqvarna makes the better of the two. I think still makes a good one, but I, I've, I've tried the Husky ones. Echo is coming out with one. I haven't tried it. Their other one. You know, I'm sponsored by Echo, so I have to say, well, I don't. I actually don't like the battery-powered saw. I've said it. I own it. I'm not going to promote something that I don't think is good. But I hear the new ones coming out is going to be good. So I look forward to that. Might get in trouble for that. But you know what? You have to be honest. And that saw is not something I would ever use. 
but I have tried the Husky one. It's cool. Makita makes a great one, too. I do like the Makita. Okay, so I am going to pull in a little bit closer. <coughs> I'm going to pull in like that. And we are going to start on the... Uh, Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start on the wings. I'm going to get the wings done. So we're going to use the Mikita finger sander, 36 grit. All chainsaws that are battery are expensive. So you get cheap products, but spend the money and they last. That's my motto. I stand by that. Okay. So, I'm going to pull up the pictures of the eagle. There we go. Here we go. Feather pattern time. So remember you're playing with light and shadow. So if you can see that it's dark behind it, you, you pretty much got it. And then once I paint this, it'll look crazy nice. And you want your feathers to lay on top of each other, because that's how they do it. And at least that's how it does. But if you're going to do it, and do it right, you got you to gotta take your time and, and look at the pictures. Feathers to see if you're actually right. There you go. That's cool. This one needs it. And then... Then we can start... Quills, like the, uh, or the individual feathers. Yeah, the quills. So I'm just tucking all this under. The thing and going like this is very rare. Plus, once this is here, I'm going to paint it. So I'm going to paint it black anyways. You're going to hide that. You're going to hide that all. So all you do is look to get the cover. You cover the shadow. Kind of idea of level so if someone does look underneath it it looks clean you want it clean you don't want it choppy there we go It all depends how you run your uh, how you run your your finger sander or your angle grinder. If you can do this with an angle grinder, grinder, I'll show you just so you uh just so you can see it. Bum, 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 bum. And the angle grinder, you know, it might work actually faster just to get, like, it, it get the feathers laid down. Um, maybe not. I don't know. This is an older disc. And I, I use two discs. 
because for some reason it just, I don't know, Tommy Craig showed it to me and that's how I do it. So, And just remember, you can always come back and clean it up with the finger sander. And you want to you want to think about how the wings are coming in, right? So if you want to push some of them back, because they would be flying, right? So their pressure would be pulling back. So you know, think about the movement, think about the animal, how it's flying. Why the feather would be doing what it's doing. that I think I know where I want to go with it, I am I'm going to use a chainsaw. guys know I'm just thinking this as I go like I know I make some pretty crazy cuts like that's kind of a crazy trusting your saw cut like doing that really make sure you understand your chainsaw and you're safe with what you're doing before you actually go and try something like that like I don't want anybody to get hurt I know I'm doing a cut that I know I trust my what I'm doing 
but that's also tons and tons of experience in doing it. So, for, for anyone who's new, just be careful, okay? Because I don't want anybody to get hurt by thinking that is like a safe cut. By no means is that a safe cut, but to accomplish what I need to get done, I, I trust what I'm doing. I, I hope that makes sense.
See how I almost made the cut there and cut behind there? Now, now, now. The reason you don't do that is because you could screw up, and if you screw up, you can always push it back. Once you undercut behind, you're committed to that line. Now, until I've blocked out and started shaping this all out, I'm not going to do that until, it's, uh, until I'm way more comfortable with it. Uh, fuck, this is a lot of work. Ah, okay. That's what I get for having bad service. I can't wait till I have Wi-Fi one day. I can't wait till I have Wi-Fi. Well, who knows if I'll be live streaming then, but... Been doing it for years now. Should have been doing it a long time ago. Okay, let's stick with this Elky Elkerson. Okay, big shoulder muscles. Now, let's bring you guys in a little closer, and hopefully it doesn't buffer again. Better check it. There we go. Okay. Let's work on the elk. Okay, so the antlers are going to be the toughest part by far. And you going out, mouth open, you know, that's a little far, and not as far nose, paper back, eyeballs, and then eye, jawbone. Still good? Alright. 14. Oh, I lost everybody. <laughs> oh, shit. It happens. It's Friday. Nobody wants to be watching this. Except for you guys. So, uh, yesterday a dude, I can't remember his name, on Facebook messaged me and asked me about lines and linear lines and, and uh, carving to 
release. So he's doing this like woman's face, and uh, a woman's face is super challenging, especially in a relief because you have to get if your if your picture shows this. So say my face is here. You got to think like this is going to be your furthest point out. And then this will be your furthest point in, which means there's a line that goes across. And that line is what you have to find the face in. So now I'm looking at my elk. Uh, I don't want to move the camera in case it makes it uh, botch it. But I see that the face is going in this way, and there's a taper that goes this way for that the side profile of the nose so was, until I get the nose and that face looking in the right like feeling like it's right I have to keep pushing in and then tapering this in and then once I do get that then I'll have a, a relief feeling a relief that will look like the picture which will look like the perspective that I've given it in the, uh, the design so like the lines will work so you got to keep pushing, and then I'll start to go, okay, so, there it is, that doesn't look right yet, still a little more, now we're getting somewhere, there, now I can start to go, okay, you going out, Tapering down, but no, it still needs to be more because there's a longer, not it's longer. This is going to be hard. Another thing about relief carving is, so no matter what your line is, the head's here, this is where the neck is, the back leg is here, when you're tapering into that point here, you got to remember that a lot, I've seen a lot of people do it, they just go straight down to here, and it's like, that's not how it goes, the body tapers in, the neck goes into the chest, right, so you need to drive that line and it can be up to like this is literally a millimeter you don't see past it but if you have a a separation line that eludes to the idea that it is a animal and you're, you're creating depth and then you're able to punch out the shoulder the shoulder muscle more and the collarbone 
And, and yeah, it's going to be painted, to, and, and then, you know, like you fur it. And then it will blend. But if you have the accent muscles there, and then paper that in, And I'm just not committing into here yet because you got to wait until you're finally ready to do it. And I'm close, but i got to just make sure. Keep pushing it and pushing it. That, that's all like pretty much done. So now I can start to put in the final details of the face and, uh, and do that. 
But I'm kind of getting over it. I kind of want to go home. See, the time is at 2 o'clock. Oh. Tired. different Dremel. 8,000 Dremels and not one is set up. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I think I'll use this bit. This bit right here. So I'm going to use this saber tooth, uh, this saber tooth bit right here. I'm going to work in. Might be the end of it. Oh no, there it is. Sorry guys, bad service today.
Questions. Anybody have any questions? Let me know. I'll be there in a minute. So, I'll try and answer them. And uh, we'll see what's happening. Okay, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that was starting to look good. Jordy, how Jesse. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is the real question. Uh, 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 uh. How do you not stand back every five minutes to look? Uh, the reason I don't is because if I do that, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll never carve. <laughs> because then I'll, uh, no, I, I stand back and look, but I just have to trust my perspective and trust trust what I'm doing, because if I don't, then I could get myself into a lot of trouble by, like, just 
wasting more time because I waste a ton of time as is. So by stepping back, you know, it all comes into planning. Like if you're planning what you're doing, then you can you can better uh yeah, you're over you overthink it. So you got to trust your gut. Like I say in all my videos is just like trust your instincts, but also if you plan it right and you really like take your time and and look at the pictures. Like I don't want to move the camera, but oh, I guess I can grab the iPad. But I'm like studying this thing. You know? And in my pictures, you look at my pictures, so this is, this is a golden composition, right? So for me, when I'm doing a lot of my pieces, I check to see what that, like, I check to see how the composition is going to, like, fall into the piece. Because I love to have fluid motion, and I can explain the composition to you right now, going... So here's your line. Here was that, that composition. Here's the water flowing up, connects to the mountain, peaks at this, comes around, circles, comes down underneath, water, like all comes in to there. And granted, this is kind of Almost the center focal point. I don't normally like to have the center piece, the focal point, but the eagle is the most dramatic part of the piece, and that's what was commissioned of me. The rest is just accented. They really wanted an eagle. The rest I just came up with. Um, so that's kind of what I look for. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And... Uh, yeah, let me know if you have any other questions while I'm stopping here. Uh, question, where can one buy the new belts for Makita Finger Sander? The real belts. You can buy them at uh, Lord Co. You can buy them at uh, any store that sells Makita as a Makita distributor. So I can easily... Well, Jordy, I already told you what I'm going to do for you, so... Don't worry about that. I just got to call Chris. Now, uh, now we're getting to the, to the end here, to where I need to make some final decisions. So, it, can anybody see, like, what, is there anything that you can see that looks out, like, in a sense of depth? Uh, I want to see if anybody can see what I see. And if not, I'm going to help you guys see kind of what I'm looking at. Ryan, do you have a printable carving pick of owls? Uh, what do you mean, Shane? I mean, I, I just take pictures of owls and just use them. Get the animal and the owl you want and take a, get, you know, if it's a barred owl, Google barred owl and pull as many images as you can and then commit to one. When do you use airbrushing? Do you do it after a clear coat? Uh, before, before for sure. I'll burn it, uh, lightly everywhere. Uh, light flapper, probably not with this, uh, all light flapper, um, and then, uh, hey Shane, I just gotta ask you, yes, top of the mountain, absolutely, Mandy, that is one of the pieces that's out, good eye, Mandy, this right here is slightly too far out, nice, good eye, and also right here, so, if you look at this, this is leaning forward, which is not proper because you want your depth to be the right way. So I need to taper this back, and it can literally go to like this much as long as it hits the river and you see a separation line. That means I won't have to redo all this, won't have to redo all this, but Mandy, you are absolutely right. This needs to come back, and that needs to go back. So you nailed that well done. Good eye. And, uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to pull back and do, like, the rest of the chainsaw work that I got to do. And, and, um, uh, uh, Shane, owls, uh, you keep talking about them. So, pictures, dude, get real pictures. Don't look at other artists' works. 
don't look at other people's carvings. Don't look at my carving as a reference. My carvings as a reference is not the right thing because I'm just copying what I think a real animal looks like. If you're trying to copy my work, you're getting further from the truth already. And, and granted, that's if you're going for realism. If you're going for like my best buddy Kevin, he does spook owls and they're abstract, but they're wicked, super, super textured. Kevin Lewis, look him up. He's a West Coast Chainsaw artist, my best friend. He does crazy shit. Oh, ah, got to stop swearing. Um, he does crazy stylistic pieces. But if you're going to do realistic and that's kind of your move and you're kind of like seeing what I'm doing, I love realism. I love the idea. I, I, that's just my thing. I like it. I like detail and I like realism. And I'm not good at it. I mean, I'm okay at it, but I'm trying to capture a moment in time by copying what I see or creating something and taking many different pictures of owls like if, if I was to go on my iPad I have 20 different categories I have bears I have eagles I have owls but whatever my whatever my uh, sculpture is that's what I have badgers I'll get 50 60 pictures of badgers and just scroll through one until I see like if I'm looking at it this way I'll try to get an eagle that is that has a picture of it this way if I'm looking at it this way, I'll try to get a picture of an eagle where I'm looking at it straight on. And that's what you do. If you, if you print it, cool. If you got an iPad, cool. Like, you do whatever works for you. You just have to figure that out. And I hope that can help you. And, uh, and, and that's my best way of saying it. You know, you got to find what works for you and really kind of push yourself in, in, in improving your style and finding your own style because that's what this whole thing is. I mean, I still don't even know if I have a style, but I'm constantly searching and constantly trying to change my... Uh, oh, my God, this thing's going to be so heavy to shit. Um, I'm constantly searching... To let's see. Oh, it's gonna be. I got myself into a pickle here, guys. Motherfucker! There we go. Woo! Could you imagine? That would have been good. Good TV. No, it wouldn't have. It would have sucked. Ah, there we go. Gotta always be careful of the weight. The weight. The weight. The weight. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna do the trees. <laughs> I'm going to run a tank of gas, and, uh, yeah, yeah, Spike, whatever. <laughs> yeah, dude, no worries. And I do the best I can to help. That's all I'm trying to do. And, uh, and then, um, yeah, let's, let's get this done. Okay, here we go. Um, hmm. Yeah, so like, I don't often call, I never carve, I never look at carvers for inspir or for copying work or like looking at, I I'll always look at someone's pieces, like say, you know, Jordy, who's here right now, he sent me a picture of this awesome wizard bench that he did. I was looking at what he did with the saw and what tools I think he used when he was doing like the face and how he did the blackening. Like, I always look at what people are doing and, and trying to figure out, like, what's going to, what I could pull from that. So you could take anything from what I'm trying to teach you guys or show you guys and, and use that. And that's what this whole thing is. Like, for me, I'll look at everybody's carvings. I'll look at Simon O'Rourke, uh, Ken Tynan, Bob King, Chris Fultz, Robbie Bass, Kevin Lewis, Jordy Johnson, uh, Spike, uh, any carvers on earth, I'll look at something and maybe they're doing something that is like, oh, sick. I never thought of that. Or, oh, I see how he might have dragged the bar this way or used a Dremel a certain way or 
had a cuts all bit that did something different or a saber tooth or an arbor tech or a or not even a bit maybe there's people who are doing stuff but my point is i never look at carvings of other people and copy what they're doing but i will like for this landscape i know i needed like a fabrication or an idea so this is what i use for the landscape and then this is the bear this was actually a painting i didn't like using this but at the same time it's very hard to find a good bear doing a pose with a tree and exactly what I had in my mind so it took me quite a while to figure out and find what I needed but then you get into like eagles and just for reference for you guys you know like here's like ravens you know I got ravens and then I'll just do picture upon picture upon picture of uh, everything you can find because if you're going for realism once again that is what's going to get you to the next level so enough talking and uh let's get back to it now I'm turn the gopro off because i'm just sick of filming today just want to have some fun so I probably won't talk for a while. I'm just going to run a tank of gas and have fun and turn on some tunes and jam out. But hope that's cool. And if you guys are around, awesome. If not, thanks for watching.
I think that's about it for the day. Ah, didn't get it done. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you learned something. Give this video a like. Subscribe to my page. Be kind to one another. Have a great, safe Halloween. And uh, check out Jordy Johnson's video, which is going to be released pretty quickly. And uh, I should have some videos coming out this weekend. And I got a filing video that I'm working on, but... Okay. Eh. Later, guys. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Happy Halloween. And... Uh, we'll wrap this thing up on Monday or Tuesday. I'll go live when it's done and finished for the final touches. And then maybe we'll carve something and give it away. Because it's more fun to watch when you're carving something fast. This is slow. But since I haven't filmed it, this has to be the video. Okay, guys. Later. Oh, it's the weekend. Yeah. <laughs>